Look at me, I'm in a bedroom. One of the biggest questions we get here on Pixel Game Squad is, what happened to your old game room? Now, if you're new to the show, you might not know, but for those who were around when our old channel existed, Retro Liberty, we used to do NES Pursuit videos, just like we do now, but something was a little different. At the end of every NES Pursuit video, we would proceed to give about a 10 minute pickup video inside of a game room. Now, the reason this is kind of nostalgic and important to a lot of the people who watch the older show is that while we were building the show, we were also building the game room. What I want to show you guys is we're going to build a game room completely from scratch. Um, this is what it's going to be in. During the time that the NES Pursuit was only maybe six or seven episodes old, Ricky and I started taking my shed in my backyard and turning it into a game room. Now it was kind of fun because we took the viewers along with us. We would go on trips to Home Depot. We would go in alleys looking for plywood. We would go jump in dumpsters and look for carpet to use for the floor. There's some holes, but I actually found all this plywood you see here in trash cans, like what you just saw me doing. So um, I'm pretty thankful to get all that for free and I just found the rest, so I'm gonna bring it in. I got some cleaning up to do, we'll see. And there's the rest of my uh, but crap. Now it was super fun and it was super bootleg, but it also kind of is the answer to this question of what happened to my game room. Well, uh, what happened is uh, it, it didn't end up working out so well because we didn't know what we were doing. Now, funny enough, we should have seen this coming because so many people in the comments were always like, hey you guys, um, that's not really how you do it. You could see from the video, we didn't know what we were doing. We were laughing. I think I was like using a power saw right by my ankles, kind of like trying to cut through some wood, right by my feet, probably almost could have hurt myself really bad. Putting in insulation and everything, and everyone that knew better was like, you guys aren't doing this right. But uh, we didn't really care at the time, we were excited, you know, the show was new, we're like, we just want to get this game room made, it's awesome, it's exciting. Now. The game room was a fun place. A lot of fun things happened in there and it was a really cool set. And the time that I started to notice something happening with the game room was actually when we were filming a different show called The Morning Mug that I used to do with NES Complex. Oh man, I don't know what kind of strange cocktail this is for me in my stomach though. I'm a little concerned. Yeah, I don't feel good right now. I'm not, I'm a little concerned. Ew! Oh, God. Burping it after is way gross. Okay, I still haven't done it. Oh man, but that's the deal. I miss that show a lot, by the way. It's just too hard to do nowadays with uh, being busy. But I remember moving a couple games off the shelf after doing the morning mug and being like, uh, I don't think this is supposed to look like this. There was a lot of mold uh, behind the games. Now, at this time, I thought to myself, shoot, everyone was right. <laughs> you know, I should have listened to people who know better or maybe even professionals. But I was like, you know what? I I'm gonna bootleg Jerry rig this again. So what I did is I proceeded to go to Home Depot and I'm like, what's your like thickest paint that like coats over stuff that might even give some sort of like weather seal or whatnot to it? And the guy was like, oh, you want this stuff over here? I think it was called like Henry's or something, the brand. And basically I went and I got uh, more paint, like a thicker paint with like a seal on it. And I removed all of my games off the game shelf and I just started layering up the walls, layering up the ceiling. I even went on the top of the roof and took what was left over and started dumping the bucket on top of the roof. Uh, God, I, what, a, what a stupid, stupid idea. But for me, uh, in that time, it was the best bootleg way to do it and just do it because we want to keep doing our show and I don't have time to stop the show. And um, it worked, I'd say, for about a year. But with that, I don't even think it actually worked. I just think I didn't see the mold or see what was happening. So I thought to myself, nothing's going wrong. Uh, luckily enough, by the time the mold started to come through again and I could see all the mold and the disgustingness that was happening again, uh, none of my games were actually damaged. Nothing actually happened to any of my video games or my toys or my accessories. So that was good. But at that point, it's kind of when Retro Liberty uh, just got quit. It's kind of at the time when we quit doing the show. Uh, so I wasn't like too concerned about having a, a display for my games. So at that point I proceeded to take all of my games, all of my toys and everything and put it in my son's room. Now this was cool and exciting for him because uh, he has friends that come over and he really enjoyed the attention he would get from his friends. Like, oh my gosh, 
this is your game room, this is amazing, this is beautiful. I don't know if I ever told you that I love this room. We are actually, we are in uh, Brixton, the great Brixton game room. But as time went on and he got older and he got into different things, he was like, I don't know if I want all these in my room, dad. So I kind of started moving them into places that weren't luxurious, into closets, into storage, into areas where you don't really store games. Yes. Uh, Speaking of weather and all that, yeah, it definitely kept the games in good condition, but they weren't being really played at that time and everything was just kind of scattered around in different areas. I've done a lot of things on YouTube as well. Uh, I started working for a company where I've done a lot of different types of YouTube videos. I will also do a video on that sometime because some people have asked uh, how we made a career for a while uh, doing YouTube videos. A lot of you guys don't know that we did a lot of different type of YouTube videos and still do. We have about seven different channels that we run, Pixel Game Squad being one of them. And the reason I bring this up is because when I started doing like video game stuff on the internet again, we weren't really sure what direction we were gonna go with video games on the internet. Uh, we did a lot of kids stuff for our other channels, so we kind of kept the videos like really kiddish, like playing Roblox and other silly things and like little skits. And slowly but surely, you know, me, my retro started to creep in and I'm like, I, I, I like doing this stuff, but when we talk about video games, I kind of, have to talk about retro, and retro's my life, I wanna do more retro. And pretty much uh, retro reared itself up again and came out. And uh, when that happened, and uh, we decided that we we're gonna do like NES Pursuits and talk about retro stuff and really let my passion run free again, we made that decision. My boss that I was working for, where we work in his warehouse, was like, hey, we have some extra offices, we have extra desk space, we have extra walls, and pretty much I was able to take all of my stuff and move it into these rooms. We have a room, a giant office room, where I have put all my toys, well not all, a lot of my toys, a lot of my games, a lot of my consoles, some TVs, posters in there. We got another wall that I was able to kind of put my knickknacks on and my extra toys that I never really know what to do with. Uh, we have another desk area where we throw around more of our stuff. And again, my son now is wanting me to put some of my stuff in his room. And this is really exciting because this time around, I'm not like telling him what to put in his room. I gotta be like, hey, what do you want in here? And this is really new, this is really fresh. So there's barely anything in there, but he's, when I come home from the swap meet, he gets to pick what he wants in the room. I'm like, hey buddy, whatever you want me to store in here, you can have in here. So my game room, technically speaking, is like three different rooms and different spaces and different areas. And yes, I would love to do a game room tour on it because a lot of people ask about it. So I think I will do one soon. Uh, we keep buying more things so much, so quick, so it's always changing. But technically my game room is spread out into an office room now. It is spread out onto a desk, uh, my kids room, a wall and Ricky has his own separate, you know, that's just my stuff. Ricky has his own game room at his house and part of his garage. Gabo has a game room, NES Complex has a game room. Uh, Mikey is going crazy with Pops. He's starting to take over the office space in the areas. So uh, as far as the shed goes, the game shed, right now it is a strictly a storage area for my house. Um, there is no games in there. There is some old stuff from the old NES Pursuit videos that are still lying around in there, which is really nostalgic for me to see. But as far as that specific spot, uh, it's not a game room anymore. It's in different areas. And uh, I still have most of that stuff that was in there. I'd say like 80% of it. Uh, I sold some stuff, but since then I've gotten pretty much all of it back and more. <laughs> That's just how uh, game hunting works when you're in the video game hunting world especially when you start getting addicted to Sega Master System and opening your mind up to new types of collecting. I'm excited to see what I what, what the future holds for game rooms and where I put my stuff. It's always fun to take a look back like a year later and be like, whoa, look how my setup used to be back then or how my setup is now or my setup is there. I've debated too turning that room back into a game room, but properly done with professionals doing it, not me. That is not my forte. I will not pretend that it's my forte. I can't do it. So I will definitely have a professional do it this time around and uh, sit back and maybe just pay some of the extra cash to have them do it so it can be done properly. Let me know if you guys have any other questions about anything. I think this is a kind of a fun topic for me to sit around and, and chit chat with you guys about stuff about the show. You know, you guys are here. I think that's what's really cool about this community. And uh, we thank you. That's it. I got nothing else to say. I'm in my bedroom. My wife's outside watching the kids. It's time for me to go out there. All right, I think that's all I actually got. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Subscribe if you want. And my kids are here. Time to play. Anyone here? What, Dad? Who's in here? Who's in where? Who's here? 
Why? Are you changing? Oh, that pickup show. Yeah, tell everyone thanks for watching. Tell them to subscribe. Thanks for watching and subscribe. Do they, hey, what do you think of Fortnite, bro? Mm, not so good. What do you think about it? Just give me honest truth. Um, it's, I just don't like it. You don't like it? It's a good son right there. You go on outside and play, son. You've done well. You've done well. I have a little word of advice for you guys. If you guys are ever putting drywall up on the ceiling, make sure you have some extra screws or an extra screw gun somewhere where you can reach them. 